Craig, um, did you hear any of that conversation with Rod Carr in the last hour, the previous hour? Good afternoon, Michael. Once I heard that he was coming on, absolutely, and thoroughly enjoyed his lucid comments on um, his advisory role, which we're very lucky to have him in that position. Okay, so your reaction to what Rod said is, I mean, you've, you're hearing some of the reaction from people who's saying, well, basically, he's got the science wrong, he doesn't know what he's talking about. What's your response to that? Look, I think the debate is really important. It's really important. So I would urge listeners to participate in the offer by the Climate Commission uh, to receive submissions on the pathways the next six weeks or so, which will feed into Rod's requirement to report by the end of the year. Um, he he is a creature of fun, uh, or the commissioners rather, and uh, politicians will decide put, put policy. So my thinking here is that if we can get a, 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 an agreement through the process of engagement with the public, uh, agreement on the primary source of data is, you know, more or less the basis for policy decisions, that's a good start. And, and then the question, the policy decisions are the, are the various pathways and there's now an increasing divergence uh, between the regime, policy regime pre-election and now where uh, in the uh, steps, action steps of the coalition, methane will not be in the ETS. And now there's an advisory group considering, you know, what, what to do about methane um, as part of our contribution to Paris. And so it's a two-gas regime, but the focus so far has all been on the carbon dioxide side, um, uh, emissions from um, energy and, and transport, rather than methane from ruminants. And and we'll have to have this discussion because it, it has implications for our obligations by 2030. So re really important. And I did note in the release earlier in the week that the coalition punched out um, the kind of a 2030 targets for nationally determined contributions. So the five-year split, so up to 2025 and then 25 to, to 2030. And, and nationals net GHG emissions more or less follow the megaton track that uh, the Climate Commission punched out in 2021. There's a little bit of an improvement in the, in the second five years, but they're broadly in agreement around the kind of target. So that, that's helpful. So the big question for, for us as a nation is is methane treatment um, and, and how that um, how those emissions are going to be managed to get to 2030. So bring just on the debate. You, just before we get there though, Craig, can I just settle this issue with you? The yep. science is settled, yeah, um, that human activity has caused global climate change, yeah? Well, that's the hypothesis on the basis of which all this policy works. Correct. Um, so, to, so to the extent that, you know, there's, there's a social or a societal agreement that that science is credible, then we move ahead, right? So you, you, you have to work, work on that basis. Um, does it mean that we need, as a nation, to adhere to international agreements because of our peculiar situation? Well, that will come out in this methane debate, which is a short-lived gas, very different uh, to, to CO2 and different impacts. Uh, and we just need to figure out what, what, that, means, what that means for our, our production of, um, of milk, and, of beef, uh, et cetera, with the, with the ruminants that we have. So. So you can you can argue about the science to the well to, to the cows come, come home. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but uh, uh, unfortunately that gate's kind of closed. Uh, yes, it is. And it's not, yeah. to, not to say that we shouldn't debate, and, and I think we should. Let, let's do that, and we can figure out the margins or the ranges. But but more or less, you know, we we need to figure out our our, our contribution. And if, if Rod's argument's moving towards, well, it's a cost of living benefit as opposed to a, a climate change issue, that, that's quite a subtle but interesting shift. And it is, isn't that it? I, yeah. That I, that I wasn't, wasn't aware of before. Yeah, no, I agree. I, it was a very interesting argument that he's moved from we're doing our bit to, no, 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 this is going to improve uh, New Zealand's life 
uh, our, and our economic arguments from a market perspective. But, and that but, was the but, key but part but, of... But, but, yeah, yeah, but if listeners disagree with the science, please put your views into the commission um, because we need to hear them. And, yeah, and but you're going to have to do a bit better than Richard did before the 12 o'clock news, Craig, which yes, is, yes, well, yeah, okay. you know. Yeah, yeah. So and assertion isn't it, science. And I think it's worthwhile, I haven't done the work yet, um, ran out of time, but go back to the IPCC uh findings and, and to make sure that there's no movement going on glo globally with IPCC. So uh, I, I think that'd be quite useful to understand whether you know, glo global science views are shifting uh, as part of this process. So if your readers have got time, listeners have got time to go back and check uh, the science that's uh, still being worked on by IPCC. Uh, which uh, I think they review on a yearly basis and I, to update, uh, amend, clarify, sometimes say, oh, God, we got that wrong. Um, and yeah. uh, 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 I'm sorry, but that's what science is for at the end of the day. I would have thought it's to review, analyse, examine. But uh, it's just that I do get annoyed, and I want to state this annoyance so that you understand, Craig. I get annoyed with people who go, well, this is all crap. Um, and um, I've got no scientific evidence to base it on, but I've done some back of the t t calculations and it's all crap. And oh my God, it all happened t 10 million years ago, anyhow. And you, and I, you and I would, we would both get impatient after a while with that argument. Mm. Well, the role of science is to put up a hypothesis or po hypotheses and, and test, right? Test and test and test to see whether those are correct with empirical, empirical evidence. So, you know, that's what science should do. It's, it's grappling a little bit with, you know, the the, the vagaries of, um, you know, how how warming's come about. But uh, you look at the evidence on changes in temperature, and you have to think about well, is that a short-term phenomenon, a long-term phenomenon? So, so let's go back to IPCC, and maybe maybe we can look at that next week to see whether there has been a change at the global level. Um, okay, moving on. Um, the other thing Rod Carr made, well, I, 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 first of all, how do you take it that the government is going to do this, get its own independent panel of experts um, to look at methane? Uh, Rod was quite diplomatic on that. Rod Carr was quite diplomatic on them doing that, but asking for a se He did say they are asking for a second opinion. Does that suggest a lack of confidence in the Climate Change Commission? Well, there was a group uh, of research a research organisation funded by government and the private sector on finding technologies to cope with methane. And quite a lot of money went into that research. I've not seen any uh, output from that would, which would suggest that there are obvious uh, mitigants uh, to methane uh, from technology yet. And so the advisory group will probably take stock of that research and will look at our our societal uh, and economic needs and, and have to make some calls around what is the pathway for methane uh, as, a, as a split gas um, uh, contribution to Paris 2030. Just um, on that though, it isn't an option for New Zealand, is it? Politically poli um, or economically, from a trading perspective or from a political perspective to just say, it's all bollocks. We don't believe any of the science. Um, it's all natural phenomena. We'll just carry on as we're going to carry on. It, it, that isn't an option, or is it? Well, there's just a series of trade-offs we've got to think about. So if a European consumer is sensitive to uh, uh, methane emissions of our, our dairy production, uh, but the Chinese are not because they want the dairy output, how do you, how do you manage that? You're talking about livelihoods of our farming community in New Zealand and their ambitions to, uh, you know, with animal husbandry, with growth of incomes and um, their, their, their kind of future earnings profiles. Uh, so so it, and do, we, do we have to follow global conventions or global agreements where our, our WHG profile, given agricultural production and our exports of you know, valuable food are so different to everybody else. And we're, we're kind of an outlier, and, and yet we're being templated by a, you know, kind of a global, uh, a, a global obligation. So, I am sure this advisory committee will be thinking about all these trade-offs. All right. Okay. Um, 
and then ultimately the policy decision uh, will be made by the government in uh, next year, I think it is. Meanwhile, over the next eight weeks, uh, and I think it's next year that the Climate Change Commission also need to report to the government as to whether or not they're following um, their own legislation, their own policy path and, and what progress they've made against it. Do we need a Climate Change Commission? Uh, well, not necessarily the, the, the entity itself, but, but the importance of this uh, structure is the independence and its report to Parliament. So it's not uh, in, the, in a government department. It's a bit like the Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment with Simon Upland. It's independent, provides independent advice. And I think that's really helpful uh, as a way of knitting together uh, different, different views from within our society. Um, what, what I would like to know, and I don't know how often this is produced, but how, how well are we travelling with our emissions profile? You know, how do you get an update regularly to understand whether the megaton outlook that uh, the coalition signed up for by 2025 and 2030, how, how are we progressing? Which gives us an indication of these, you know, these liabilities that are, are, are sitting on our 2030 targets. If we don't meet them, we have to buy liquid uh, offsets like carbon units from the European Union. So, you know, Treasury would want to know, well, are we got a cash outflow happening in 2030? And how, how, do we, how do we get these progress updates from time to time? So I would like to see that.